section 16.4, half-life of a radioisotope. Go ahead and check out video problems 100 and 101, the last two uh, video problems that you have. So half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of a sample to decay. And so what happens, here's iodine-131. This is the radioactive source. Okay, this is the sample that's going to decay. After one half-life, the amount of iodine is cut in half. But it doesn't disappear. That half of iodine that we are now missing has been converted to xenon-131. After another half-life, we have even more converted. So that, and then we can see it yet again. But notice that the amount of iodine is decreasing by half each time. Now this half-life could be anywhere from uh, 50 seconds to billions of years. Uranium has a half-life of billions of years. So it's sticking around. Now half-life is something that doesn't change. And we'll talk about half-life more in AP when we talk about uh, kinetics and uh, first order reactions. Right? But what you need to know is that the half-life is something that is constant. We can't predict which atoms will decay, but we can say if we have this large sample, half of it will decay in this number of this amount of time. Okay. And it always follows a decay curve that looks like this. All right. So here are some half lives. You can see carbon 14, uh, 5,730 years. Right. Um, strontium 90 has 38 years. You can see uranium, as I mentioned, four and a half billion years. Right? There are some medical radioisotopes that, that are much shorter, luckily. You can see the technetium is only six hours. Iodine-131 is eight days. And that's used a lot of times, I believe, in, uh, to, in thyroids. 